Good evening, everybody. So, welcome to July 2022 monthly meeting of Holbish Parish Council. Just a quick fire drill should the fire alarm sound, if you can exit by your nearest exit, which is over there or through here, and you can meet at the far end of the um, car park there, just to make sure that everyone's accounted for before you leave. Thank you. So, I will be introducing each agenda item. Uh, please stand to address the full council. If members wish to debate on an agenda item, please raise your hand to indicate your participation and I'll invite you to speak in turn. When voting on a motion, please clearly raise your hands. The first 10 minutes of this meeting is dedicated to questions from members of the public. After this section, a further 10 minutes is dedicated to receive table reports from elected members of Lincolnshire County Council, South Holland District Council and the police. So firstly, do we have any questions, please, from members of the public? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, yes, can I just have an update, please, with regards to the cemetery and the um, error that was made and when the individual is going to be contacted? Sorry. Um, are you a member related to the family or not? Uh, no, I was contacted by them. Oh, okay. Um, we won't discuss the issue in public um, without their permission because it is such a sensitive situation. But if you would like to just email the clerk afterwards, then we can discuss it with you if that's okay. okay. Any questions from the public? Mr. Powell. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can we just have on that following on from that question? Can we have just clarification on which cemetery is referring to? Is it part of the whole guy or is it somewhere else on the St. John's Hall? Park Road. Right, thank you very much. <coughs> Okay, any more questions from members of the public? Thank you. So secondly, um, um, do we have speakers please from Lincolnshire County Council, District Council and the police? Are you representing Lincolnshire County Council? I'll do a bit of both. Thanks I'll do a bit much. of both and then everyone else can have a go who wants the to. Is that alright? Okay. Tracy, thank you. Um, so, medieval event, obviously you know that went ahead. Uh, all a success and we'll be looking to book again. I have emailed Jan in regards to asking for documentation so we can uh, fill in all the necessary for you. Uh, the toilet refurbishment is due to be finished at the end of this month, uh, at the latest first week of August, so that will be um, all up and running and lovely. Um, we are also, and this is something that myself and Nick, uh, Council Worth, are working on together, so it's an LCC district kind of joint project. Uh, we're looking at doing a pop-up historical centre in Hull Beach, uh, just on a trial basis, about six months. Um, so LCC are going to be kind of providing the exhibits and that kind of thing within it. Um, and also I've also spoken to <coughs> Lyndon Secker and bringing him into it as well because obviously he's got vast amounts of knowledge as well. Um, it will be funded by the Town Centre Improvement Fund um, and so that will be a six month basis on the High Street to obviously help, help to generate the High Street further and it will be a team of volunteers that are running it, so that's that one. Um, I was out again with the police today and we did in fact patrol in Carter's Park. All good, <laughs> I think it report. Uh, the footfall counters, um, obviously I believe uh, Sophie saw the data that I shared in regards to the medieval event made a huge impact. Um, you did request the data via Facebook, um, obviously again if that could go through the clerk, uh, but I will provide that through to you for that. Um, and Prosperity Fund, again, consultations closed, but myself and uh, Councillor Worth, we did submit kind of joint, joint thoughts in regards to that proposal. In regards to county, you've seen uh, Boston Road, obviously Anglian Water are it's been slightly delayed in, in doing their pipe and work, we've come up against a couple of challenges, uh, but it is being pushed forwards as quickly as possible. Enforcement data, you asked, I can't remember who, but someone asked for that last um, month. 
To give you an idea, between 21 and 22, there was 166 fixed penalty notices issued in Hull Beach. Um, to kind of give you an idea of how this year is going, from January to June this year, so it does cross over to financial, but from January to June, there's been 135 issues so far in Hull Beach. Uh, the holiday activity and food programme, that went live on the 8th. Uh, so now families can book into that for the summer holiday clubs and there's actually a nice range of choice of that. Uh, and I think, finally, uh, I met with the Lynx Road Safety Partnership and the police um, outside UAH. We're looking at what measures can be put into there. Um, we're looking at kind of railings and things like that to stop people kind of walking straight up the pavement, straight across to Market Raisin. Uh, so those kind of conversations are underway. I have had the results through for the survey on Park Road. Not looked at it in depth yet, but I'll get that over to you next week on there. And I think that's it. But I did print out the enforcement one for you, so I'm not that. Thank you. So I don't think that actually. <coughs> it just shows the ones from last year. Super. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Tracy. Any questions, let me know. Any questions for Tracy? No question, I'd like to offer a vote of thanks for our hard work and putting on that fabulous medieval event. That was really, truly fabulous event. So I took the whole issue in the Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Um, any other district representatives? Oh, yeah. Sorry, Tom Branch is chairman, I had nothing to add. Nothing to add. Francis, do you have anything? Thank you, Chairman, I've said it all. <laughs> Thank you. Any other district representation? Thank you. Okay, right then, so we'll instead of standing orders and commence with our first agenda item, which is 2022 oblique 3-036, and that's apologies for absence. I have received apologies from councillors Peter Helder and Rachel Flard, which are accepted. Thank you. 2022 of week 3 hyphen 037 is declarations of interest. To receive any declarations of interest in accordance with the requirements of the Localism Act 2011 and to consider any requests for dispensations in respect of pecuniary or non pecuniary interests in agenda items. Do we have any declarations of interests, please? Okay, we'll start with Steve. Opportunity interest in 0.44, section B, as an invoice for the grass cutting, and 0.48, on price of the work. Please start. Uh, 040C, non pecuniary. Same thing. Yeah, I've got a non pecuniary for 040C. Okay, and um, 2022 oblique 3 038 is to resolve to approve as a correct record the notes of the meeting of the council held on the 13th of June 2022 and the 24th of June 2022 and to authorise the chair to sign the official minutes. Has everybody read those? Do we have any proposals, please? And a seconder. So, if you all those in favour. Okay, that's much better. Okay, right, I've just got to sign the knife away.
and satin, so it won't be long. Thank you very much. Okay, so item 2022 of Week 3, item 039 is the Parks Report, please. Okay, so um, following on from um, the last meeting when it was queried about the digital notice board, the assistant clerk um, a few days later went on some training with the Leedminster Association to local council, where it was confirmed that digital notice board is an official notice board just as any other information displayed on this is the same legal value as any other notice board. Um, following previous conversations regarding the use of red diesel and members' decision to sell the red diesel, I approached a local farmer to ask if they were interested in purchasing the surplus in the tank. They suggested that we would, uh, it would not be easy and suggested we make contact with the National Farmers Union as the government have made some updates to the legislation. The NFU investigated on our behalf and came back that we cannot use the red diesel still. So I'm going back to the farm to see if we can organise the tank will need cleaning out before white diesel can be added. Um, as everybody is aware, the new slide has gone in in Carter's Park today and I have been informed that it's not been finished, so I'm assuming it is finished apart from the um, safety surface on the side. Um, the toilets are to reopen in Carters Park on Wednesday between 8 and 3, Monday to Friday on a trial basis. Um, there's been some vandalism to the equipment in the park, which has been reported to the police, but in general, the level of antisocial behaviour has declined <laughs> over the past week. So. And that's the end of my report. Okay. To receive an update on vacancies, this is our yeah. MP. Right. So, oh, we currently have vacancies. Town Ward, four available for co option. One vacancy awaiting end of the 10 elector request. One vacancy subject to election. Home Ward, two vacancies available for co option. And Drove Ward, one vacancy available for co option. Item C is that the auto request vacancy um, following the resignation of Sam Favell. It's just to confirm that the next date is the 18th of August for the election and the nominations will start from the 14th of July to the <coughs> 2nd of July. Um, and the process is slightly changed, so um, South Holland have asked us to post it on the website, which we're trying to do, but it's not from the NPS picture. Thank you, Jim. Item 2022, I believe 3 040 is the Open Spaces Committee. And before we start, we're looking to call interested members onto the Open Spaces Committee. Steve, we have um, a hand up there. And do we have a proposer for Steve to join Open Spaces? Isabel, and a seconder. Rick, all those in favour? Thank you, Tim. <coughs> Agreed? I'm sure they're welcoming you on board. Thank you for that. Anybody else to hop onto open spaces? Or is that into capacity now? Uh, yes. Into yeah, capacity. Oh, good luck. Okay. okay, so item A there is to receive the report <coughs> from the of the committee, which is Appendix 1 <coughs> on, your, on your agenda. And not off. Thank you, Mr. Okay, so uh, Carter's Park, the centre area has been uh, closed and will remain closed for the foreseeable future. Uh, there'll be a sign on it to say that uh, it's being looked into as a project for 2023 24. Um, also, another project we're looking at is the cost of a level tennis net for the tarmac area. Um, there's also the cost of a new sign for the entrance of Carter's Park that's to be investigated. 
Cemeteries, uh, meeting with the, the vicar and faculty uh, uh, in uh, took place on Friday the 8th, as called later on in the agenda point. Um, uh, on allotments, um, myself and the Council of Hutchinson and the clerk will carry out the um, form, uh, further inspections needed uh, for allotments that are deemed to require improvement. That's going to happen on the 9th of August. Uh, the former plot of 1B Bounceville is to be split into six um, additional plots uh, if feasible to do so. Uh, the rubbish bond Bounceville was uh, agreed to be offered as an extension to uh, plot number G48 at no cost for the first, uh, the first year. Um, the allotment holders at uh, Bounceville will also have a representative that will liaise with the Open Spaces Committee. The Nature Reserve, uh, a working party was called to look into improvements uh, and it will be led by myself and Councillor Flood and four members of the public. And finally, on uh, Tolbridge Bank, uh, a sign uh, of purchase saying dogs must be kept on leads. Uh, permission to be sought from the Crown Estate to site two picnic benches at Tolbridge Bank and also ask for a baby garden container. And that's the report. Okay, so um, item B is to receive an update following the meeting with the church representatives regarding the church yard. Uh, in relation to the uh, meeting that we had on the 8th, last Friday, uh, it was a very positive meeting um, and uh, we're really looking forward to getting together with um, the, the, the vicar and moving forward with, for some future plans for the closed churchyard. Um, it was sort of like discussed about some possible options, but we're looking to take that back to open spaces and then we'll you know, uh, relay any further information once that comes through. But uh, I, I think it was very positive on both that side and the churchyard. Yeah, That's great, great. to discuss the result of read away for the garden battlefield allotments and the farmer educational foundation. Uh, apologies, I'm not so seated. Can I uh, put a non-pecuniary interest in 40C please? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Right. He's going to kick this one off. You want me to start? Yes, if someone needs to. Uh, right, okay. Um, obviously, members will all remember there's the ongoing issue um, with the uh, asbestos and the fact that we've cleared so much, and then uh, obviously um, we took legal advice um, and basically we were told that we and the landowners were both responsible for any more work that needed to be done. Um, so we're back to, um, obviously, the trust have contacted the clerk again and said that they will not be going for any more legal advice, but they are asking us to reconsider their offer previously, which was basically that we continue to do all the work that was on the list, um, which is uh, quite, a, quite a considerable cost, um, or potentially look at purchasing the land from them. Um, I don't believe we've actually had price come through from them yet. So it's really, do we defer it until we get a price through and then discuss it again? That would be my suggestion, because obviously we can't really decide whether it's a viable option for us to purchase the land unless we know what price we're talking about. Anybody else want to join the debate? Yeah. So there's a proposal there to defer the item until we know the cost of the land. Um, do we have a proposal for that? Tim, um, a seconder? Mark, all those in favour? Okay, so that item has been deferred. Okay. Item D is to discuss and resolve to agree the way forward regarding Ashwood Homes land to the rear of 
Park Road Cemetery. So a letter came in uh, with regards to some parcel of land that's landlocked. It's uh, um, been sent into a sales and saying that they're looking to sell the land edged in blue, which was submitted to everybody with the packs. Um, as number two, on the land register drawing enclosed. Um, and I believe you are meeting uh, with a contractor on Monday the 27th and he has full instructions to act on our behalf. So there is an intention there to sell, um, but obviously again we've got no indication of price. Um, I do understand some work has happened there um, recently. Um, yeah. um, uh, with regards to how the land is now, I don't know if it's going to be of any use to us at all. Is it something we want to consider in person? Um, personally, I feel like the land could have been of value where it was before. It had trees on it, it could have been a lovely woodland area. Um, it, it obviously did need work doing to fix it, it was heavily overgrown. Um, but in the state it's in now, with all the trees removed, etc., I don't think it's going to be of any value to us as a parish council. We don't need an extension to the cemetery because we've got Holgate Cemetery um, and it's got that many tree roots in there anyway, it won't really be useful for a burial. So. Okay. Is there anything we can do? I have a look at exactly that. It's a clear in my day um, now. Um, so it was to, dis to do discuss and uh, to resolve it. Sorry, to discuss and resolve it. Does anybody else want to add anything before we come up with the proposal? Tim? Yeah, if the piece of land is landed up anyway, it's actually no use to him whatsoever. Then it would be useful to us. Therefore, the price would represent that accordingly. Uh, therefore, I think we should at least wait for him to to say and potentially purchase it for next to nothing effectively and make it into something if you want to. At the end of the day, you've got it, you've got it. If you haven't got it, or well, maybe it could be a problem. Okay, so uh, the way forward would be to write back to the last time we should That's it then. Yeah. Um, is that a proposal? Do we have a proposal for that? Not yeah, Tim's proposing to write back and ask. Do we have a second there? <laughs> yeah, so I think all those in favour? Okay. Motion <coughs> And E is to resolve to agree the use of Carter's Park by a religious group. <coughs> Mark. <Well. coughs> yeah, um, it was just, yeah, when, when the uh, letter came in from um, the member of the public in relation to this, um, they wanted to cite a couple of areas where they would, uh, they would be based that is within the park. And, and I believe uh, Cassie was obviously not here this evening, but she did mention on there that we got something previously in our policies that stated that we don't have um, any uh, religious um, entities, if you like, that face themselves in the open space. So I just wanted to make that I had a little look at the document, and one of the sightings was actually where they used to always be, and that was outside, which is obviously not in the park. That's the highway. If they're at the front, they're going <coughs> through the gate. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So we can't, we couldn't say no to them at the front as long as they're not in the park. Would they have to? <coughs> would they have, then have to uh, ask for permission from the highways if they're based next to a highway? I mean, it's usually some town hill, don't they, and stuff. I don't, I can't make any answer to that question. Do you as well? I don't know, but it would be. Courteous to yeah. let them know that you are planning to site there, I would have thought. And do we have any confirmation whether it is indeed in the park that we are unable to allow this kind of activity? I don't know, I'd have to look back to the additional documents. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, have a look to check, but I do recollect the same as what Rachel said when it's uh, basically political stuff and religious, it's a neutral <coughs> Um, so, to resolve to agree the use of Carter's Park by a religious group, the answer then will be no. Yeah, I'm proposed. Seconder? Isabel, all those in favour? 
Okay, that's motion approved. Who else would respond to that? If we could ask for the big <coughs> contact district. Thank you. Okay, so 2022-03-041 is planning, properties, emergency planning and speedy committee <coughs> to come up interested members onto that committee. Do we have anybody interested before we go into items of joining this speedy and planning properties? Well, that's the biggest start in the world. Sophie, yeah. uh, do we have a proposal for Sophie in the longest group in the world? Tim, um, a second yeah. Steve, and all those in favour? Okay, so Sophie, welcome on to Parliament and Properties. Anybody else who want to move on? No, I have to capacity. No. Item A is to receive a report from a member of the committee, which is Appendix 2 in the agenda. The sits were agreed for the following month, which will be Hawkgate and Fox's Low Road. The locations for further placement points in High Street, Church Street, and Park Road were discussed, and the suggested locations will be forwarded to LCC for approval. Um, it was agreed that Councillor Steve Lewis will work with Councillor Peter Howden um, to place the sits each month. The clock had chased LCC regarding Saturday Bridge Junction and they will be sending out an engineer to look at the location in the near future. It was agreed to ask for details of this visit and for um, members to be in attendance if possible. It was agreed that the office should be responsible for the emergency plan supported by members and following the increasing costs of energy, it was agreed to monitor the situation with Kimbrough and discuss the situation again later in the year. It was also agreed to ask all tenants to provide evidence of PAT testing for all electrical items within their rooms. The committee agreed to defer the item regarding cost for replacement lighting in the clerks and deputy clerks offices to full council, which is on the agenda item later. Thank you, Mr. So item B is to resolve to agree the planning responses, um, so we've got um, <coughs> is that uh, uh, really? <laughs> ah, okay, so HO 9030722, amendment to uh, Belgium and storage, <coughs> HO 9062022, uh, proposed signage. Um, H09063322 is a single story extension and alteration. We have any comments in the way? <coughs> any comments to members? No? Uh, so, do we have a proposal and a seconder that we have no comment to make on this application? Is it about proposing seconder? So, all those in favour? Okay. Okay, C, to resolve to agree the consultation of street names for the land rear of 29 Oakwood Glade as Francis Close, Cypress Close, Elder Street, Silver Close, Elm Drive and Sycamore Close. Um, so it's proposing yeah. to have a second death for those street names. Thank you, Mick. All those in favour? Okay, we can mark with confirmation. <clears throat> and D is to discuss and resolve to agree the way forward with the cemetery chapel's roof following the temporary halt of work. Yes, please, as well. Okay, so um, as 
you will all be aware, this is a very long-winded saga, but um, we basically, they started work, they um, have got all the slates shaped ready to go, and they started stripping the roof ready, and they discovered bats. So obviously, as members will be aware, that if there's bats discovered, then you have to stop work until you have authority to continue working. Um, we've had a price from um, an ecologist to come out and do a bat survey. Uh, the contractors believe that they are only in bell tower, which would mean that it wouldn't affect their work. So therefore, once the ecologist has given the go ahead, they should be able to carry on straight away. If that is not the case, then obviously we'll have to wait until the bats have disappeared, which hopefully happens in September when they finish nesting. So tonight we basically need to uh, agree to pay for the ecology uh, ecologist to come out to do a survey, because one way or another we need their say so that we can go ahead. It may then be that we can go ahead straight away, or it may be that they have to delay it and we go ahead later on. Thank you, Isabel. So um, here we are with the protected species that's been um, located in the chapel. Um, the report will go one way or the other. We can't guarantee that after nesting they will vanish either. So there's a straightforward proposal there that we have the uh, proper people out that would give us the authority to do the work, which means a spend. Do we have that spend available? Uh, yes, we can find it. Unfortunately, I don't think we've got much choice. Not. No. Um, is there any additional spend going to be required for scaffolding if it goes over an extended period of time, or is that taken on by the contractor? Um, conversation has been had with the contractor, and they have stated that we will be having to pay for an additional cost as of now. But the basis that they are charging us is that. Whilst they are not working, we will have the charge. Once they come back onto site, that will then continue as included within their cost. I wish to go back to them and argue that point because I believe that what we have signed for is a fixed price um, contract, <coughs> which doesn't specify a time period. So I believe that we have got a good case that we shouldn't have to pay any more. It's not down to us that it's been delayed. It's just unfortunate that there's bats and so we can't carry on at the moment. So I'm going to get somebody to look at the contract and just make sure what we're talking about and then go back to them. Okay, so in the interim we need to um, um, just consider the options for this report. Um, Obviously, we start making it out here. Um, so, do we have a proposal to go ahead and get a report which will give us your authority? I'll propose it. Rick, do we have a seconder? Well, since you haven't got a second, I've got the option, let's do it. Thank you. Okay. All those in favour? Okay, that's a motion agreed. If we can get that kicked off, here's the mm -hmm. Okay, and E is to discuss and resolve to agree the cons. Consultation for the Lincolnshire Minerals and Waste Local Plan. Whose plan is this one? It's just it came in. To it's just a consultation. I haven't really got anything to say about it. The document's there. It's yeah. just involving us in this consultation. So the, it's very early stages, basically. Um, did everyone get a chance just to have a little read through the the bits that were sent out in your agenda pack. Um, it really just says, I think it's from the Tuesday the 28th of June till 5 p.m. on Friday the 12th of August, so this is time. If you can just have a little tune through that, if there's anything you want to comment on, that Jane Murray, and she can comment on the consultation for us. So we agree for the consultation. Um, do we have a proposer and a seconder? Is it done? So, <laughs> all those in favour of the consultation? Okay, so that's okay. 
So 2022, I believe 3-042 is the PR and IT committee and to receive report from the chairman of the committee, which is appendix three on the agenda. <coughs> now, with the chair not being here, I can cover the um, appendix. Uh, Peter Allen asked if I would. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Peter's report. We've had one further entry for our calendar <coughs> photography competition, and it's going to be re advertised on Facebook to try and manage some more entries. The car show posters have been placed on all HPC notice boards. Press releases to include the recent antisocial behaviour in Garth Park and Park Road Cemetery. Our next HPC forum is today. If we could have some members of the public attend. Uh, and the next four in August will be either in St. Mark's or Burnwood, depending on the next four council meeting. The situated uh, agendas for full council meetings will be placed on all notice boards and all wards. Uh, CCTV is, is being investigated for cars, park, and car roads, country. And personally, following the Awful incident that happened in Carter's Park last week. Uh, we've already started the ball rolling in the PR and IT. We've managed to get two companies to come out and have a look for us. Uh, I'm struggling to get a third, but I'll persevere over the next few days. And hopefully, by the next full council meeting, we'll be in a position where we've placed the cost, etc. etc. Uh, sorry. Uh, we agree to purchase our own notice boards in St John's and the Fern Wards. Uh, once the commission has been sorted, budget for 22, sorry, 23 24 will be discussed at the next meeting. And the next meeting is on the 24th of August at Cooper Road at 11am. Are you ready for the report? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Some good stuff in there. So agenda item 2022 of the 3 0043 is the events committee and to receive the report from the chair of the committee which is the appendix 4. Okay. Uh, and so our last item of the agenda is the agenda for the next um, on the ways we could improve events moving forward. The committee felt that the event went well considering the resources we had, but we are happy to look at all ideas and improve to improve events for the future. The car show is fast approaching and all the paperwork has been approved by SAG. The information packs have been sent out to all exhibitors this week and we are currently and we currently have approximately 200 vehicles plus trade stands, etc. Um, and are now running a reserves list. Um, UAH have kindly agreed to us using their field for visitor parking, which gives direct pedestrian access to the field of the Primary Academy. Uh, we will need as many stewards as possible on the day, so if anyone has any time available and they'd like to contact the clerk with their details and the times that are available, we would be very grateful. Um, the Jubilee Garden was discussed and the works needed to complete it were agreed. The official opening of the will take place on the 27th of August at 2pm. Um, we now have confirmed that somebody from Taylor's will be attending to open it for us as they kindly donated a huge amount of bulbs for the garden. Um, it will be an informal event with members invited to come along, uh, members of the public invited to come along with a picnic. Um, hopefully, we'll have an open mic session, and there will potentially be um, some food and drink available as well. Um, so, hopefully, that will be discussed in a bit more detail at the next meeting. Um, we're planning two more yard sales: one on the 31st of July and one on the 27th of August. Um, ideas for the Christmas event were discussed and we are looking to contact local groups and schools in early September to ask them if they wish to take part. We plan to have stalls and activities during the afternoon followed by some form of a parade through the high street to finish at the churchyard for carols around the tree and we will be discussing this in more detail in our coming meetings. Okay, thank you, Mr. So we've got... Uh... 
Lots to look forward to. And B is to discuss and resolve to agree to enter a float in the Spalding Flower Parade on Saturday the 6th of May 2023. Email come through offering us as a parish council the opportunity to take part in the uh, new event in Spalding. Um, I personally think it would be a fantastic thing if we could get involved in some way, shape, or form. We have had, uh, we've gone back to for clarification around insurances, etc., and we've had clarification back that their insurance would be covering us whilst at the event. Um, I think we just need a little bit more detail of exactly what's going to be. Um, needed from us um, but I personally think we should grab it with open arms and try and take part. Thank you. Um, there's certainly a lot of hype around it's everywhere I look at the moment and it's looking very um, um, impressive so um, yeah, if we decide that we are going to support that um, so we're resolving to agree to enter a float in the Spalding Flower Parade on that date. Do members want to agree that, or do they want more information before it? Well, I'll just say, Mr Chairman, yes. um, I appreciate this is, in itself, is a major event, putting on uh, a float within that parade, because they are such happy floats. How do we look at resources, how do we do it, you know, with transport, and a load of preparation time, the access to a barn to keep it in once being done is a major maybe. I would love, I, I fully on board with us putting a float in at that break. There'd be another way of getting our vision on that. I love the idea, but we, we're going to have to make sure that we do it, we do it properly, we do it well. Uh, that's my only concern. I don't, I don't want to see us going to the half cup of the float. It's got to be half cup of the float. We're all fabulous, aren't we? Show, we've got to show them that we can do it as well as anybody else can do. Um, in the communication that we've had back, they have said that there is potential that they have got vehicles available that we could utilise. Um, but again, I think we just need to understand what they're expecting of us. Is it just um, us providing a tractor and trailer and decorating it, or do they want a full on float? I think we just need a little bit more clarification of exactly what we are having to provide. You know, are they, are they looking for a particular theme or, you know, that sort of thing. So I think there's a little bit more to find out, but in principle I'd like to say that we we go back and say we're interested. Um, the, the email that came through, um, it says about at this stage it was just an expression of interest. So it's going out to all parish councils to see whether they're interested and then just say further information is going to follow. So, I would like to propose that we, we are definitely interested. Um. Okay, so um, if we look at the agenda item, which is to go to agree to enter a float, if we meant that to show expressing our interest in entering a float, um, then I'd be quite happy to put a vote around the table on that amendment. So, do I have a vote for the amendment? amendment? And a second that team, so all those in favour of the amendment, <coughs> the agenda item has been amended. And then we're then voting on the um, to agree to express our interest in enter float into the Spalding Flower Parade on Saturday the 6th of May 2023. Do we have a proposal? So we and a second that team, and all those in favour? Okay, so that's an agreement. Thank you. Okay, so C is to discuss and resolve to agree the detail of street art in Carters Park. This is location previously <coughs> minute reference 2022-03-008, which was item H in that set of minutes for reference. Isabel. Um, this came about in our discussion around the event for opening the Duke And we discussed as to whether we could have some form of um, have a go event where people could come along and hopefully we'd get somebody um, that would help coordinate it um, and allow people to have a go at creating some form of street art on whatever location. We have already agreed that we would offer the remaining part of the fence 
Um, but it's as to whether members feel that maybe because of the Jubilee Garden proximity, whether the, the side of the toilet block would be a suitable location to have a go on the day. And it could always be painted over if it's not good, can't it? Um, good point, yes. I, it's, just, it's something else that it was hopefully bring another element to the, to the day. Um, well, in, in principle, for the fence, I, I don't see that being necessarily a problem. However, I feel that if we allow street art to be done on, on the back of the toilet block, we've already been reporting to police our negativity about antisocial behaviour of people spraying on the toilet block. So we're sort of like going back to what we're trying to stop by allowing it to be done on the building. So, while well, in principle, I don't see a problem with the fence. I think the toilet block should be in there. I think I, I do get that point, um, and I've always have thought that if they had an area that they could express themselves on, the graffiti almost gets lost because it's already got stuff on it. But I do take your point. I just, I'll come to say I, I just take up on that, that particular issue. Uh, a lot of the experience of travel in Europe, uh, University of San Jose in southern Hungary, had issues of, of graffiti, and, and they had a big area outside of town where the whole area, like the fence we've got on the outside of the football pitch, was allocated as we graffiti. Mm -hmm. And they'll be told all the kids put their graffiti on that and do the, the graffiti in the town but she stopped. It, it, it's literally that an option to express themselves because the, it could be seen from the road, it, was, it wasn't <coughs> something that could be seen, it, it was part of the thing. So that's the whole point. You don't want to do street art unless you can see it. Therefore, you know, give them a chance to express it. That, that fence is, is a plain fence, totally boring. Look at the burning wall, look how lovely that was with all the graffiti on it. Yeah. So the, the fence is not in question here, it's a toilet block. No, I understand. But I've got a little mark. You, you can't paint the toilet block because the issue is you don't want to paint in the future. Um, you may have put temporary doors and paint them for that matter. If you only allow a, an area for graffiti, allow an area for graffiti. No problem with that. Because I think the fence is more organised artwork. No, not necessarily. And we're not talking no. street well, art, wasn't it? Um, the, the, the agreement was to, we, we agreed that the fence would be an area for street art. We didn't agree who was going to do it or whether it was organised or whatever. Obviously, the, the previous pieces have been organised and they've been done by the school, but there's still an awful lot of fence left. Mm. So there is no reason why we can't. If we could start the ball rolling by saying, come and have a go on that day, and then encourage people that that's the area where you can do this. Okay. Um, just one thing, when we actually spoke to um, a member from the police and they came out and looked at all the our social behaviour and we were suggesting things to do to reduce it, they did actually suggest having a place to do graffiti. Um, obviously, uh, personally, I wouldn't be bothered about having a have a go bit on the toilet block. I think to me, it's a plain wall that's crying out for something, personally. Um, and you could either do it the side face in the Jubilee Garden, or you could do the side face in the road. Either or, um, so it's visible either side. Um, yeah, I think if you could have various areas where you could have somebody who is more of a professional street artist to have an area allocated for them, but then also do a mixture of places where the people can just come and express themselves. Obviously, on the day it'd be monitored, um, so they won't just be writing whatever they like. But as it kind of builds up and up, if you get something on there that you don't like, you just commission something else to go on top. Um, and it could just then keep building up and up. So, mm. I'd be in favour of any of them. Okay, anybody else for that debate? So the agenda item is to discuss and resolve and agree the detail of street art in Carter's Park, which is a location that's previously agreed. We need to agree. Isabel. Kevin, okay, well based on what's been said, if we agree that on the day of the um, opening of the Jubilee Garden, we organise a have a go utilising the fence area initially and see how it goes and then we can come back and if we want to extend that or we want to commission a piece of street art if somebody is
particularly talented and we spot them, we could then say, would you like to do something on this? Do we have a proposal then? Do we have a proposal for that, Tim, and a seconder? Sophie and all those in favour? Okay, so that's been motion Okay, 2022 of week 3, item 044 is the Finance Committee. Item A is to receive the report from the Chair of the Committee, which is Appendix 5 in your agenda pack. Thank you, Rick. Uh, so the normal one of the activities we're carrying out, uh, all balances were found to be correct. Uh, the clerk spent some time configuring the outer software, uh, which will enable us to have a much better understanding of budget control. It's confirmed that the zero turnover has been reserved, I believe it's now been ordered. Uh, the other options that were available at the time could not have been as any value for money whatsoever. But the discussion regarding the older Kabuto, Kabuto, whatever I forgot to where the consensus was that HPC would benefit if it was sold in its condition. Uh, we briefly discussed next year's budget and asked other committees to start planning any projects for the next financial year. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so item B is to resolve to agree to authorise the payments for June <coughs> 2022 and to note the income for June 2022 of this one. Of 5,890. And the payments were 18,957,000. Proposer and seconder, Nick. Seconder, Isabel, all those in favour. And C is to note the bank balances as of the 31st of May 2022 as follows. Count ending in 4844 is 3,000. Account ending in 5394 is 16,344.80 pence. And account ending in 01BC is £281,950.25. And that should have been the 30th of June. Oh, sorry. The 30th of June. So moving on to item 2022 of the 3-045 is the UK Shared Prosperity Funding and this is to receive a report from the Council of Social Um, so just an update really, um, myself and Isabel Hutchinson attended um, one of the sessions where they were explaining about the funding, uh, which is very useful. Um, they've done the consultation, which was open for everybody, um, but they did mention that approximately they were thinking September, October time would be opening up the bids, um, which again is open to any community group or anybody business or ourselves to put in the bid um, for the funding. So um, just asking a few questions really for what um, we would need to do for that bid. It would need to be pretty much costed um, by that point. Um, the um, the chap that was on there was suggesting they were thinking bids might close around Christmas time and make a decision in January, obviously, what is set in stone. Um, but I think it would be very useful for each committee to kind of start thinking about um, any projects they think would fit in with the funding, if there's other local community groups or businesses that you think could either work with us or, you know, what help with putting together a bid. Um, I would suggest if we kind of at the next committee meetings or come up with a few ideas, um, have a look through the funding because it needs to achieve the certain areas and criteria. It can't just be um, anything. And obviously the more boxes it ticks, the more likely it is to be funded if it's a really good idea. Um, and then just come back at the next full council meeting and see what ideas we've got to start thinking about which ones we would like to put forward. I think it's an opportunity that we don't want to miss. So good to have something costed and ready. 
So, how much you want to spend? What kind of, what kind of figures are you talking about? So, uh, it's 2.7 million for the South Holland District Council area over the past three years. Um, and the funding gets put into South Holland's bank account, I believe, at the beginning of each financial year. But for this current year, it's approximately October, once they get their plans approved, if that's all right. Um, so, yeah, <coughs> that 2.7 divided by three. It's a 900 grand a year. Yeah. There's obviously going to be more than 900 organisations, so you talk about about grand. So it's not going to be massive amounts of funding. You'll probably be looking at a big point about uh, 5 to 10, something like that. If you yeah, I mean, they, they didn't specify um, the sort of scale of bids. It's a mixed bid, so it's going to be a mixture of capital and revenue based funding. Mm -hmm. So um, I suppose you just put it in. Um, they did say that obviously if you've got match funding together with it, then you know that would be useful as well, especially if you're going for a large pot of money. So it's something to look at, especially as we're thinking about budgeting for next financial year anyway. Um, if there's a project that we're looking at budgeting ourselves for that could be put forward to access this funding, then we're already going to be getting costumes underway anyway. Um, so it'd be worth putting something in. Yeah. Um, it would be good to get a post out there and some publicity because we've got lots of our wards and our villages that are crying out for that sort of thing and getting them on board would be fantastic. Mark. Um, two things. Firstly, can I ask if the department can put it on the ego expense basis again? I don't know that's good to go out if not already gone out, so that we can just make sure we get the next full council meeting for it. Thank you. Uh, and secondly, maybe something we could also look at is getting a bit of information about skate park. That's something that a lot of the youth in the towns are pushing for. And with um, uh, the, the building that's going on, especially next to Fen Road. Maybe that's something we can liaise with them to put a bit of capital funding into it that relates to uh, a usable community space. Good wanting to uh, match fund. Yeah. Already some ideas, so bring them all to your committees and we can start talking about them. Brilliant, thanks, so. Okay, so item 2022 oblique 3, item 046 is confirmation and date and venue of the next parish council meeting. So the next a meeting of the Parish Council will be on Monday the 8th of August 2022 and I believe the venue there is called the Cambridge Hall. Okay, and then to resolve to exclude the press and public under the Public Body Administration Meetings Act 1960 due to the confidential nature of the business to be transacted in agenda items 2022 of the 347 and 2022 of the 3048. Many thanks, ladies and gents.